A stroke describes what happens when part of the blood supply to the brain gets suddenly cut off. And the brain consumes a lot of oxygen, to be clear, despite making up only about 2% of our total body mass, and it might even be less than that for some of us, it uses up about 20% of our body's total oxygen supply. And when that blood supply is cut off, so is the oxygen along with it, which means that the cells and tissues of our brain can no longer perform their normal functions. This means that people start to experience symptoms rapidly, which include facial drooping, confusion, trouble with speaking, problems seeing out of one or both eyes, loss of balance when walking, and dizziness. Why these symptoms actually happen is because, as you might know, different parts of our brains control different functions, such as controlling our speech, our movement and our sight. For example, a stroke in the occipital lobe, the very back part of our brain, can result in blindness, while a stroke in the front parts of our brain is more likely to result in limb weakness and problems with speaking. And there are two broad categories of strokes that we think of as doctors when we're trying to work out what's going on. The first is what's called an ischemic stroke. This is when a clot is blocking one of the arteries, that's a blood vessel carrying blood towards the brain. Treatment usually involves involves giving blood thinning medications such as aspirin to help break down these clots and stop new ones forming, or treatment called thrombolysis, which is when we give enzymes such as alteplase to break down and eat away at those clots and help dissolve them to restore blood flow to the brain. More recently, a treatment called mechanical thrombectomy has become more common, where instead of giving drugs to solve the problem, a very tiny wire is inserted into the blood vessels that go towards the brain by radiation Radiologist, and that wire is fed all the way up the arteries of the head and neck to find where the clot is and fish it out. And this is actually very similar to the process that happens during coronary intervention when someone has a heart attack and a wire is inserted into the arteries of the heart to remove the clot and restore blood flow. It's almost exactly the same, just happening in a different part of the body. The other major kind of stroke is what's called a hemorrhagic stroke. So instead of a clot blocking the blood flow this time, it's actually that the blood is flowing into an area that it's not supposed to be, out of the blood vessel instead of going to the part of the brain it's trying to get to. So just like cutting a hole in the side of a hose pipe, not only is there now water spilling out the side of the hose pipe somewhere it's not meant to be, but less water is reaching the other end of the pipe. If this happens, the major treatment involves stopping any blood thinning medications which are going to help that blood flow to the wrong place, controlling the bleeding point which may involve getting the neurosurgery team involved, and controlling the increasing pressure inside the skull because you can imagine you've got more fluid flowing into what is essentially a closed bony box and that increased pressure can be bad for our brain. And this is actually why it's so important that we diagnose what kind of stroke someone is having as quickly as possible. Because you can imagine that if we think someone is having an ischemic stroke and we give them blood thinner medications, if they're actually having a hemorrhagic stroke, all we're doing is helping that blood flow into the wrong place go faster and faster by thinning the blood. And in doing so, we might be making that patient's problems an awful lot worse. So we find out whether someone has had a stroke and indeed what kind of stroke they've had by doing a brain scan. And this is typically a CT brain scan as soon as someone arrives in hospital. If the diagnosis is not clear at this point in time, you may need to undergo further testing, which may include things like an MRI scan, a more high resolution and detailed scan that uses powerful magnets, or a lumbar puncture. That's where a needle is inserted into the spine to sample off some of your spinal fluid. And in this case, we'd be looking for the presence of blood in a space where it's not usually supposed to be, as that might suggest that you've had a bleed up here. Certain conditions can increase your chance of having a stroke. High blood pressure, medically known as hypertension, indeed high cholesterol, known as hypercholesterolemia, diabetes and atrial fibrillation, a problem where the heart doesn't beat regularly, can all make you more likely to have a stroke at some point over the course of your life. And these conditions are all managed differently and on a patient by patient basis. But generally speaking, they will involve a combination of medical treatments, such as antihypertensive drugs to bring down high blood pressure, or statins to help bring down cholesterol, as well as lifestyle factors, including 
including regular exercise, healthy eating, and very importantly, stopping smoking. And lastly, and really importantly, if you're concerned that someone might be having a stroke, the NHS guidance tells us the main symptoms and signs to look out for, which can be remembered with the mnemonic fast. Firstly, the face. Is it the same on both sides? Can they smile? Has their mouth or eye dropped on one side relative to the other? Then think about the arms. Can they hold them in the air and keep them there? Are they as strong on both sides or weaker on one side? Then pay attention to speech. Is the person's speech garbled, confused? Are they able to get the words out that they want to say? Equally, they might have problems understanding what you're saying to them, or may be completely unable to talk despite being awake. And lastly, T is for time. This is the important one. If you see any of the signs or symptoms listed above and you're worried someone might be having a stroke, that is the time to call 999. Call for an ambulance and tell them that you're worried someone might be having a stroke. The thing to remember with strokes is that time is brain, and the faster we can get someone diagnosed and treated if they need it, the better their outcomes are going to be. So thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I really want to do a lot more of this patient information type content. So if there are particular conditions, treatments, drugs, anything like that, that you want to have explained in a way, explained in a way that might be a bit easier to understand and jargon free, then let me know down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye. -bye.